Welcome to my channel where you find all about mixed media, art journaling, assemblage and anything else that sparks my interest. Hi, my name is Bea Grob and I'm glad you are here today. Hey all, I'm back with the little chat, vlog, whatever you want to call it. Today I'm going to talk a little bit why I'm kind of tired of YouTube and while I'm talking about all the new laws and regulation and what it means for us creators and for you viewers, I'm going to show you this little um, art journal which I'm pretty sure you have seen already quite a bit of it. So let's dive into the table and I talk a little bit and I show you what I have done with this altered book. Well, as I said, I'm kind of tired with YouTube, not with videos per se, but with um, all the new regulations, I can't feel like I'm going to step into a trap at any minute. First disclaimer here, I do believe that we need a regulation and laws, don't get me wrong, but for me as a creator who doesn't collect any da data, by the way, it is used to, I kind of feel I get punished for something that isn't in my control. Reading and listening to all those videos and text, I really have to think about it. Is my content attracting children? I do often whimsical faces. I use fun words. I use the word fun quite often. Seriously, are only children allowed to have fun? I do use bright colors and my paintings are vibrant. I like it that way and many others do too. Unfortunately, I can't afford to pay a fine from, let's say, uh, some say 10,000, some say up to 40,000. And yes, I did mark my videos not for children as I haven't intended them for children anyway. Now, why don't you just mark them for children, you may ask. Well, there are the new rules for YouTube here. For videos created for kids, there are fol following things that you no longer get. Viewers no longer can comment. I do love the interaction with my subscribers. Not all of them are over at Facebook. No longer do subscribers get notification if I upload a video. No longer YouTube suggests my videos to other viewers. No end screen, no cards. And the other thing, not really a big thing for me, but maybe for bigger channels, the monetization. They have to expect less money. As I said, I haven't made any money so far with ads, so that's the least of my concerns here. Another issue I have is with the music. I did use the YouTube audio library to be on the safe side. Now it seems I still can have copyright issues because YouTube removed some of the pieces. Just saying, I had once a problem with Vimeo and the customer service was quick and easy. That's a thing I really miss on YouTube, a good customer service. My conclusion? Well, I think I'm gonna really concentrate a bit more on my school at Teachable or on, on my free member area where I will probably add more longer videos again. I also gonna upload more on Vimeo, which is a platform with no ads at all. No, I'm not leaving YouTube right now, but I'm feeling very uncomfortable right now on YouTube. But now on to the flip through for some of my art journals you haven't seen yet. Hopefully that doesn't attract children. So I have been to Seattle many times and I actually make it pretty every year while I'm there because I can stay with a really good close friend to man. I make a little art journal. So that's one of those I made with that kind of very different binding. So that's what I did. I did use her colored pencils mostly because I didn't bring my colored pencil with me. I did bring some watercolors. I again I did um, do collage. I did use some of her inks and played with the inks. Oh, there's actually a white page. I didn't really know that. I did um, grab whatever word I can could find as collage materials. Uh, again, I did use watercolors and uh, some colored pencils. I did use some of her stamps. Uh, that's a magazine piece here. After a walk at the beach, I was inspired to do some shells and. Uh, 
uh, snails and whatnot. Again, I did use stuff from magazine to cut out and did add some of the washi type I did buy there while I was there. I remember I did I did buy there the mermaid markers from Jane Devonport and I tried those. So that's what the watercolor is in, in that area. So that's what I did while I was there. And that's a really quote I really think, oh sorry you can't see it, that's a really a quote I think which really describes very much my friend over in Seattle and my side by side or miles apart. Soul sisters will always be connected by the heart. I think that's very true. So that was 2017 and then I think it was 2018. Yeah, it was 2018. I actually, we do go drifting together, my friend and I, and I did find those index separators and uh, you know those uh, measurement sticks you get there in the, like the Home Depot places so I did a little art journal where I did make it from ground on so uh, watercolor papers mostly and then I did play around I did also find those Joss papers there that's the first time that I did see them I we don't here in Switzerland we don't know so much about Chinese tradition so I was very intrigued by those papers. I remember I did buy ink and one of those dip pens so I did try that out. That is um, yeah what I did there. So it is a really tiny little journal and we went to Archie's McPhee so I did grab those stuff. I did put in photos as you can see here using napkins and uh, washi tapes and that's one of the stickers from Archie McPhee which I did incorporate and then we went to exhibition so I did keep those uh, exhibition tickets and uh, there was a lottery where you could win actually one of those artworks. Unfortunately I wasn't the lucky one. <laughs> uh, all kind of stuff, things. So uh, we went often to, often like twice to Mod Pizza, which has a gluten-free pizza, <laughs> and I uh, did use one of the tea bags and did play with that a little bit. And I was teaching actually an art, um, a collage class there, and that are works from my students so that's what they did. I found a little envelope and did put in huh, what did happen? Oh one of a really nice artists you should you should check her out Flying Redhead Lynette Hensley. She's a mixed media artist and she does awesome work. Check her out. And by the way my friend Meredith Arnold she is a great uh, jewelry artist too. You have to check her out too. Here we went to a light show. Again that's one of my most favorite teas over there which we don't have here in Switzerland but I really would like that. So I did drink a lot of black tea with pomegranate um, flavor which I liked. Some uh, cutouts from various places. I did travel, uh, I did buy then at that time some pastel and I did try that out and then I just made like little figures from magazine cutouts. What do I have here? Oh, uh, I got uh, some ATC cones from somebody so that went into here. And that was the light show, you probably can't see a lot and I was Oh, it was actually in October when I was there, so I did admire those colorful leaves. And here we all. That's what I did for last year. And I'm already ready for next August. <laughs> I did this Dosa Dos book, which is empty. I mean, I did use all kind of materials to put in. 
like uh, one of those handmade watercolor papers but I also like music sheets. I added some little thingies just to have a starting point. Um, again I did use those um, index div div dividers sorry, and uh, some cardboard. The cardboard is actually from a cereal box. So nothing fancy. So that's what I'm gonna use for next August. And just a really quick show, that's what I used uh, also when I was um, this May. It's not finished yet. I actually did buy this from Alisa Borke, Alisa Borke, I think. I'm gonna put links in there. She, I did buy one of her journals she made and then I was playing around and that's what I carry around when I'm, I'm over with uh, very basic things. Oh, I have already windows in here. So like a glue stick and um, a 2B pencil to sketch and uh, one of those paper stumps and some jelly roll pens and a scissor. That's how I travel most of the time. So I don't carry too much stuff with me, just that I have something with me because you always can find stuff. You can find all kind of collage materials and you go anyway in the art stores because you want to know what what they have so then you still can buy stuff. And as I said my conclusion for this thing with YouTube is I gonna uh, concentrate on my website. It's always my website. I'm going to concentrate uh, on um, weekly inspiration for you over at Teachable. I'm going to gonna work more with my free member area. And just to give you an idea what I have planned and to give you a little bit of a head up, that's the kind of things I have planned for doing with you. We start, we, we do all kinds of stuff. We do like art journals. We're going to do assemblages, we're gonna do cards at one point, uh, we're gonna do our own printables, I'm gonna have printables for you to use if you don't feel like painting a face, I'm gonna provide those that's all gonna be included. Now Teachable and Vimeo is a platform I have to pay for, I think we have to remember that YouTube is a free platform, nobody pays for it, nor the viewers nor the contributors, so if if they decide to do something, there's not a lot you can do about it. It's their platform, they give it for free, so we have to deal with what they offer us. But if I have a like a an ongoing class, like a weekly inspiration over at Teachable, I can do whatever I want and I have more control over because I'm pretty sure 13 year old children don't pay for me to watch me weekly doing something like that. I'm not so sure about YouTube. Maybe a, a face is attracting to them. Maybe it looks a little bit like a cartoon. Who knows? I just don't know. So that's why I'm going to be more over at Teachable. I'm going to be still so far once a week on YouTube, but on the other times you have to look for me either over at Teachable and maybe a little bit over in my free member area. I hope you enjoyed this video anyway and I hope you enjoyed to watch a little bit what I do when I'm not on camera. Take care, bye!